Hey guys, it's May May and welcome to Freestyle Friday. Um, I want to show you another pillow project. On Wednesday, I showed you a pillow project for my bed. I told you I was kind of updating my room and um, kind of wanted to take you guys along as I did that. And today I'm going to be doing another pillow project because I think it needs a little bit more. And this one is no sew and no glue and no nothing really. <laughs> Just some burlap. Um, and a few little supplies and we're gonna make some pillows now This is not the size of my pillows that I'll be showing you in pictures on my bed This is the size that I can show you in the camera to show you how to do this project So I'm gonna make this one smaller, but the pictures you see the pillows pillows will be bigger So it's basically the same concept But you can change the size to fit whatever you want it to do what I did was I cut them burlap to fit the size that I wanted for my bed and um I didn't do them to a standard size pillow or anything, but you could do that if you had some you wanted to just kind of measure and just make that happen. What I did was I just made the pillows kind of the size I wanted them to be, just to kind of fill a space, and then um, added three inches to the ends all the way around. So whatever size you want, once you see the finished pillow, it'll make perfect sense. Now, I say adding three inches all the way around. For this video, I'm only going to add two inches all the way around, and the reason is it's going to be a smaller pillow. So here's what we're going to do. On the side of your burlap, what you want to do is place a ruler and um, decide how far in you want your fringe to go. We're going to make a fringed pillow. Now, three inches here. Let me see if I can do three inches up here, too. That'd be a tiny pillow if I did that. So, I'm going to leave it at two inches all the way around. But on my big pillow, I did three. And what you're going to do is basically fray the edges of your burlap all the way around. So, make sure I keep this in camera for you guys. So, you're just going to grab the edges of the burlap here. Leaving your ruler there, it just kind of lets you know when you've gotten to your two inch mark. And you're just going to fray these edges. The first set takes longer than any other because you have to kind of get it started. But after you get this started, the strings are so much more separate, it's much easier. So that's an inch gone. Now we're going to go one more inch. And you can see I'm watching through my ruler to see where I need to be. This project is not hard, but it is time consuming. This is not a difficult project, but this is one of those that you're not going to do in an hour or so. Depending, you could do one pillow in an hour, but I don't think you could do any more than that. Okay, I'm close. I'm going to do one more strand. And that gives me two inches of frayed burlap. Now, you don't have to get rid of this because this is good stuff that you can use. Um, so, the larger your pillow, the bigger the pieces of twine you'll have left over. Alright, let's turn it. And this time, we're going to do two inches up the side of fraying. All this will make sense as we get going. <laughs> So I'm just going to go up this side and do two inches. See how much easier it is this time because you can just grab this thread at the end and go. Let me show you what I'm doing with my hand down here. See, I've got all the frayed edges that I had. I'm just grabbing one of those and pulling. Just until I get two inches. See how it gets caught like that? It's not a big deal and that's going to happen. What is happening is in your frays, some of the burlap is kind of losing its texture and it's catching in the fray, but it will be no problem. You just want to make sure. I've got to do like two more strips here. One more strip here. Okay, so now I want to show you. Move these out of the way. Now I have two inches of frayed burlap on this side and two inches on this side. So my triangle or my rectangle is getting frayed around. Now let's go to the other side and we'll just turn it this way. Place our ruler back and start fraying. This project is messy because burlap the more you fray it, the more fibers kind of fly everywhere. So it is a messy project, but little vacuum, little dusting, 
That'll clean up the mess. But once you get it done, it is so cute. Sometimes messy projects are the, are the most fulfilling for me. Like, sometimes I just like to make a craft mess. And then, of course, I walk back in and go, Oh, i got to clean that up. <laughs> if you have a nice sunny day outside and you want to go outside and sit on the porch and do something, this is a great porch craft. Because, you know, burlap will fly all over the place, but it won't be in your house. Okay, so I'm close to two. I'm going to do two more pieces. And that gets me two inches. And see how I just kind of check periodically? Just kind of look and see where I'm at. All right, let's move these out of the way again. And then we're going to do this side. Kind of looks like a centipede at this point. <laughs> two inches on this side. So you just want to check. Just keep an eye. This will be easy because it's short. I do find that doing one string at a time is better than multiples because multiples will kind of tangle, especially for doing a bigger pillow. The ones I did for my bed were significantly bigger than this, and that can cause a problem if you're pulling big, long strings at a time. By the way, this burlap is just some I got on the yard at Hobby Lobby. So um, this is, if you remember at Christmas, I did that burlap wreath where I cut the strips of burlap to save some money from the yard of fabric. This is some that was left over. And so, what a good way to put that to use, right? Okay, so here's one piece. Now I'm going to do another piece exactly like this, and we'll get back together, and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now you see that I have two pieces done, and they are the same for the most part. Burlap is not perfect. It's just not. But there's two pieces laying there. Now here's what you're going to do. You're going to take both pieces laid on top of each other and you're going to separate out five to six strands of the burlap strings. I would not do more than six because you need this to be kind of tight so that it'll hold the stuffing inside. So about five or six strands from the bottom and then five or six strands from the top and you are going to tie a knot. So you're just going to put these together, loop them around each other, and we are just tying a knot, making sure I got all my strings in there. And then tie, and one more time makes it a knot. So wrap it one more time. And now it's a knot. And then you want to grab both pieces and pull forward, okay? And do not worry about them. They may not be pretty right now, but when you finish, it will look good, I promise. So now you're going to go underneath again. And right next to that, you're going to pick up five to six more strings. I like five. I think five is a good number for this. So pick up five more strings. Not picking up the one you just did. We're doing a whole new knot. Okay? So you're going to pick up five strings from both pieces and knot them. It's probably hard to tell what I'm doing because my hands are kind of the same color as the burlap. But um, you'll be able to see when I finish. I mean, what I'm doing is just knotting. That's it knotting okay and then pull it now you're going to do this all the way around this piece you're just going to pick up five strings five or six whatever you're comfortable with five. also you'll get yourself in a rhythm um it takes a minute at first to get the rhythm but once you've got it it goes so much faster like you can pick them up like this stick your finger between them Make sure you are tying the top to the bottom and you're not just tying them in between each other. On the one I do with the three inch, it's a lot easier. This smaller one's harder to show you. Okay, and then just pull those knots out and get them out of your way. So you can keep working. This is something that's really good to do in front of TV. You know, sit down and watch TV. Put your earphones in. Watch some YouTube. Um, like I said, sitting on the porch drinking coffee. This is a good project for those kind of things. You know what else? If you've got kids that are learning to tie their shoe and you can teach them the knot, this is a great way to teach them how to tie a knot. Because you'll get lots of practice as you go around this pillow. 
And like I said, this project is not fast, but it's easy. <laughs> That's the cool thing about it. It is not a fast project. It's almost like if you were knitting or crocheting. Those projects typically aren't real fast, um, but there's something that are kind of repetitive. And I promise you, the longer your frayed edges are, the much easier this is. This was so much easier on my three inch frays. But now I'm kind of excited to see how this little pillow turns out because I did big pillows last night. Okay, so I'm just tying knots, making sure you can go back and do this part at the end. And actually when you stuff it, they kind of work their way out anyway. Okay, now I'm not gonna make you watch all of this because I'm literally just knotting these edges show you what I'm doing. Do you see the knots? That's all I'm doing is putting knots in those edges. When we get back together, I'll have knotted all of this plus all of this and we will stuff it from this end. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've tied all the edges and I know they look rough right now, but I promise it will look better. But we're tied all the way around and we're open on this end. So, I'm going to stuff it from this end, and I'll show you something I think helped me when I was doing it. If you take this and kind of fold this back to get those little frilly, uh, the fringe out of your way, it'll be easier to get your hand in there. Okay, so I'm stuffing it with, I had an old pillow, an old bed pillow that um, I wasn't using anymore, so I cut it open, and I'm using the stuffing from that. I don't know if it'll be enough. I may have to add some, you know, actual stuffing, but, okay, so we're stuffing... And the tighter you stuff this, the better it looks, in my opinion, because it makes your knots kind of stand out on the edge. So I'm just really shoving that in there. You could do this, like if you had some pillows that were seasonal or whatever, you could make these the size of those pillows and then um, just put this over those pillows instead of using stuffing at all, you know, instead of using any kind of filler. Just make them like pillowcases, basically. Now, as a reminder, this is purely decorative. It was so funny. My son was like, um, you're not going to sleep on those. I'm like, uh, no, not putting my head on burlap. That's hilarious. Um, see how cute that's getting with the little edges like this? And then we'll go back and pull at them some. Okay. I think I'm going to need a little bit of extra, so let me grab some out of a bag. Now I'm going to turn that back out so I can see where I'm at, and that looks good. It's nice and tight. Now you can just go back and kind of pull these around or whatever you want to do with those. And then you'll just tie this end up just like we did the rest. So you'll take four or five, just like so, and four or five from the bottom and not them. Now I'm going to tell you this looks better on the bigger version. So when you see pictures, I'll make sure I take several pictures of the bigger version because it looks a lot better. To me, I'm still going to use this one. I may even paint on it. I may even put like a word or something on it because I think that'll be cute. I'm going to finish tying this up. And I do like to start in the corners. That way I know that my corners are where they're supposed to be. So I don't get off as I'm tying. I don't get off as I'm tying it. Okay, so it's all tied up. And you got your ruffly, fringy edge, which you can mess with and do whatever you want to with. But let me show you something. I know we're not going to do this today because I said this was no hot glue. But look, what if you just hot glued some trim across it? You know, here or in the center of it. Or even if you went across it. <laughs> I just think you have a lot of... um different opportunities with this pillow and like I said this is a very very small version in the picture I show you the big version from um, what I made for the bed and it looks 
really, really good. So, I hope that gives you some inspiration for using some of your burlap that you buy by the yard. See how cute that is? How cute would this be on a porch, like in the little chairs or whatever? But anyway, there's another no-sew pillow, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think about the, um, the bedroom redo that I'm kind of taking you on. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.